Well, happy new year and welcome to the first speaking tip of 2021. Today, I want to share with you a speaking concept on how to build agreement on what might be a difficult or controversial subject matter. And the idea is to build an agreement on something that everybody would agree with, but it's related to this bigger controversial subject matter. And it's what I call the simple story. You tell a simple story that everybody would go, well, of course that makes sense. And then you roll that concept that you already built the agreement with them that that makes complete sense on this is the same thing we have going on today. Now, let me give you a couple examples of this that have occurred in my life. One of them is one of my stories. One of them is a story that I heard a gentleman in my Toastmasters Club tell. The first story is the fact that as a kid growing up, I grew up back when there were only three channels on a television set. There was no remote control. There was an antenna that you had to turn to get the signal to come in. And at eight years old, I had a 12 year old older sister. Now when you're eight, 12 is a big difference. I mean, that's half your age older. And I had, if you know anything about my history, I had five sisters growing up. So I was a little bit of an anomaly in the family because I was the only boy. Well, I would be over at my buddy's house and one of my favorite shows to watch was Batman. And I would come home and I would wanna watch Batman at home on one of the three channels. And my oldest sister would not let me watch Batman because she had had a sleepover at one of her friend's house and her friend told her about a movie about a guy that turned into a bat and flew into your window at night and then turned back into a man and sucked the blood out of your neck, which was Dracula. But the guy turned into a bat, so that was Batman. And she would not let me watch Batman. And every time I said, I want to watch Batman, she goes, no, it's about a guy that sucks blood out of your neck. And I go, no, it's not. It's about a really rich guy who's at a cave and a jet car and they fight crime. And she goes, no, it's not. That's not what it's about. Finally, one day I got down to the TV set early and I got Batman on and I'm watching it. And I, she came in the room. I didn't say a word to her. And they get in the jet car and they go out of the cave and they're going to Gotham City and all these things are happening. And she goes, what show is this? I didn't say a word. And all of a sudden the swirling bat symbol comes up and da na 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 Batman. I said, this is Batman. She goes, I thought it was about a guy that sucked blood out of your neck. I said, no, that's Dracula. Fortunately, at eight years old, I learned that people will make decisions that they think are right without any direct observation of the facts. And we have that going on today, where we're all locked down in our homes. And the only information we can get is what comes in on an electronic medium, either over our computer or from the news networks. And we're not directly observing what's happening. We're not going out and directly observing what's happening in our society and our community. And to that degree, it allows false information to be put on those lines. Just like my sister was told or thought that Batman was Dracula, we can be told things because we're not directly observing them. And one of the keys to success in life is making your decisions off of direct observation. Okay, now that was just a speech where I used a silly story about Batman and turned it into something that's very critical today. But if I went right at trying to tell people that they're sitting at home watching all their information over the computer, over the internet, and all this information is being filtered and there's major corporations behind it and they're deciding what you can see and what you can't see and they're deciding what's right, that's kind of people are going, yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. But they already agreed that it was ridiculous that my sister thought that Batman was Dracula. Okay. Another simple example, a friend of mine in my Toastmasters club one time, remember the speech so well, he said, Christmas and New Year's had fallen on a Wednesday and Wednesday was the day that the street cleaner came by his apartment complex and they can't park on the street on Wednesday because the street sweeper comes by. Well, for two weeks in a row, there's no street sweeper. So he was out there on like the Thursday New Year's Day or something or uh, on the thing, and there's all this trash in the street. So he started, he gets a broom and he starts sweeping all the street, 
trash up in the street because the street cleaner had not come by for two weeks. And he said he realized all of a sudden that, or he realized if we just picked up the trash every day and you know, people didn't throw it in the street, we wouldn't have to have a street sweeper come by and they could park on the street on Wednesday. And it was, I realized I lost my right to park on the street because we weren't responsible to keep the street clean. And it was a whole message about you lose your rights when you don't take responsibility for them. If we were responsible to keep the streets clean, we could park on the street on Wednesday. But now we can't park on the street on Wednesday because the city or the government has taken over that right to clean the street. And then he parlayed that into a bigger game about freedom, democracy, government, individual rights and individual responsibility for the rights that they have. But he made the message with a simple story of cleaning up trash because the street sweeper had not come by. I wanna share a little graphic I put together with you on this concept. And really what we're trying to do here is if we have a big point we make here, we make a little point about a little A and that little A makes a big point about a big A, but we got the agreement on the little A. I'll use it this way too. We can make it an agreement about one, which is a very small quantity of something. Everybody's agree, oh yeah, that's one, that's great. But that one can lead to 100 if we have the agreement. And so as a speaking tip, this is a great tool to use to build agreement on a concept and then bridge that over to the real message you want to have. And the point is you're, built, you're already getting the agreement of the audience. So you're not trying to, you're not trying to force your viewpoint on them. You already built the agreement. Now this, the same rules or principles apply to this bigger point. So that's the speaking tip to start the year off right now. Use a simple story to make your point and then parlay that into your point so that you can actually connect with your audience. Until next week. I'll see you soon.